going to try and just explain what happened and then get over it. Hear me out. It's Monday morning, I'm not in the yard. It's Christmas day, the 25th of December. Santa Claus has not come through my chimney or my window, so I guess I was a naughty boy this year. I'm furious! <laughs> I'm thinking back over the year, what I did. I'm buying five eight before Volvo tippers, what the team did. What we all did collectively. I think it paid off. And I'm happy with the efforts of everyone. and of myself. And I've been thinking about what to change for next year. Now there's two things here. Yes, I'm meant to be resting my shoulder. Yes, it's Christmas, but I enjoy what I do. So I'm sitting, brainstorming, looking at all the plans I have and trying to reverse engineer my way back to getting there. Forgive me if I seem to be working over this period, but there's something I was doing last year, which I'm gonna try not to do or do it in a different way. Now, you lot aren't gonna believe that I'm capable of doing this. I know you believe I'm capable of great things, but you're not gonna think I'm capable of this. I'm going to complain less. Hear me out. What a load of ballast. I know all the tricks. I've lost everything. This is fantastic. It's driving me mad. Hey, where are you going? You got 15 minutes left of work. I cannot understand how these people are in business. I'm vexed. The decisions. Hey! I will not be managed. They don't deliver. I am so angry. I'm still going to share the challenges. I'm going to try to stop moaning about it and just explain what happened and then get over it without the big song and dance and story and the undertone of music that the video team have dropped here. Yes, I'm gonna try and do it without all of that. So Merry Christmas to everyone. It's a short day for a Monday when we are not in the yard. It's Tuesday, I'm in the yard, Boxing Day. Popped in to start catching up with paperwork. We only have two lorries out today. They're doing some electrical infrastructure work, which is an emergency. Needs to be done ASAP to ensure there's no gap in any one service and everyone can have electricity to make their dinners and boil the kettle this evening. I've put two job outs today. Jobs we've advertised for in the past. One for a bagged aggregate salesperson and one for a plant hire salesperson. Now these are jobs we put out in the past, but I took them down, but I've put them up today because while people People have had some downtime over the Christmas period. There could be some thinking, some soul searching, some conversations within families, and people may feel that now is the time to make a shift if they want to try to step up or step across and have a look at a new role where they could potentially earn more money or push their career on. I have loads of emails which I haven't been able to concentrate on because the anesthetic kind of messed me up, but I'm going to begin to go through them. And one of the things is price for new lorries. And what I noticed with these new lorries is that now all new lorries they have to have the breathalyzer in them our roll on roll off has this already and every time ben uses it he obviously has to blow through the breathalyzer before he can start the engine will not start unless you blow into the old machine now And what happens if you turn the lorry off? Or how often does it happen? Uh, every half an hour. So if you stop at a job, drop a bin and jump out the cab and turn it off, it doesn't kick in. No, plenty off for half an hour and that's when it kicks in again. But I think I'm actually quite happy that that's going to now be standard in all of the new lorries because it's a wonderful safety feature. Other than paperwork, other than two lorries being out, bit of maintenance in the yard. That is it for Tuesday in the yard, Boxing Day. Imagine I told him now. Sorry, there's no work for you tomorrow. Stay home. I know. You'd be a bad person, wouldn't I? <laughs> I think you'd be a bit more than a bad person, Tom. Terry and I are discussing, how do I say this? The relationship between employer, employee, manager, and person they're responsible for. Sometimes 
people don't see it from both ways. When you're speaking to someone and they move the goalpost and you're a manager, as Terry is, then they don't see anything wrong with it and say, well, I've got to do this and I've got to do that. Oh, I can't come in because of this. Or I can't come in because of that. But Terry's saying, well, what if it was the other way around? What if Terry turned around now and said, oh, do you know what? Sit at home next week. There's no work for you. Would that be fair? Would they view it in the same way? Not really. No. And that would make Terry and the company and myself very unpopular. Fortunately, we're in a position where we don't do that, but when people do it the other way around, it seems to be okay. Are we unreasonable? Well, you're definitely unreasonable. I'm not unreasonable. <laughs> Terry's definitely an unreasonable man. But Terry puts the firm first. Yellowstone, John Dutton, Rip. And I did call Sam Jamie from there, and Sam took <laughs> massive <laughs> offense to that. He fully kicked off. He thinks he's Rip. He's a good lad, but he's not Rip. Terry's Rip. I was just talking to the team up at Radford's. They've managed to sandblast the lorry. And all the wiring. And yeah, so no, no. I haven't sandblasted the wiring. <laughs> the reason Terry's saying that is because we have very bad experiences with sandblasting lorries and doing the chassis. I do not sandblast chassis on lorries anymore. We do the bodywork and the cab. We do the alloys, we spray them black. No matter how well you try to protect that chassis and wrap that wiring loom, the sandblasting will destroy it. You will turn on the lorry, the dashboard will be lit up. You won't know what's going on. You'll be chasing cables for the next 10 years to the point where you just need to change the wiring loom. So we no longer sandblast chassis. So we won't have that problem, Terry. That wasn't a thing at Radford's, by the way. Apologies, Radford's, you didn't think that. <laughs> what, they just say you can't get the lorry? <laughs> but when we do get it back, we need to do one more axle of brakes. They're gonna do the artwork up there, but I think we need to get Southern vulcanizing. Do we need them to take a look around it, like the back of it? It needs a bottom boot cover, and I think you probably need some of the tips on the auger. Redoing. We need to give it a service. So we need artwork, we need the bottom boot cover, and have we actually run the gear on that? Yeah, it works. It, have we mixed any concrete with it? I, I, I can't tell you that. What's we're saying? Well, now we're going to turn it on, it don't even yeah. make concrete. The, the auger goes in the right direction. The auger and the belt go in the right direction. Yeah. I think until you get that boot cover done, you won't really know either, because the boot cover is quite warm, so it will stop the concrete from floating up. What Terry's eloquently explaining there. Because there's a problem with the boot cover, the concrete will sit there. When you put the auger up like this, because we're dropping the concrete into uh, the hopper of a pump, when it's up like this, it's harder for it to mix. But because of that kind of like there's open- There's a hole in the boot cover. Yeah, there's a hole. Push the concrete backwards. The, the concrete will come backwards instead of when the auger's turning. Do that again. <laughs> do your other shoulder. Yeah, do my other shoulder. <laughs> that, that'll pump the concrete upwards and then the concrete will drop into the hopper. So we need to get that fixed as well. And then that lorry, second week of Jantel, what another concrete lorry on the road? Is there work for it, Tel? Let's speak to salesman Sam upstairs and see what you say. What you were meant to say is Dan will find work for it. That's what he was meant to say. This is the boot cover that Terry and I were talking about. This is the top cover. This covers the auger. So you put this back when you want to have a look what's going on. So the sand and gravel, comes off the conveyor belt. And that little sock you can see, that's where the cement comes from. Within that pipe where the cement is coming from, there's an auger in there, what works in the same way as the auger, which actually mixes the concrete. But it falls down there and the concrete begins to mix as it's moving through the screw as it's turning. It gets about three or four down and the concrete is already mixed by that point and the rest of the spinning is just screwing the concrete and moving it out and further mixing it. But it spins a lot faster than this when it's actually working. We'll see your tips, which is your wear part on it to save wear in your actual main screw out. Without those in a good place, this is the problem that Terry and I were talking about where the concrete can start to go backwards because there'd be too many gaps. And right at the bottom between the boot cover and these teeth is a gap of just about a finger, about, about a half finger. Inch, yeah, about, about a finger. About width. half inch. And that explains how we make concrete. What? Terry, Uber, five stars. What, heated seat? Well, Terry, I've got a bad arm, yeah? None of your nonsense driving. You've got to just take your time a little bit. This is the hand I used to pay people. So, so we did it back quickly, yeah? yeah. <laughs> anyway, everyone got paid early. I never waited till the end of the month. Everyone got paid. OK. Didn't they? You're saying you never got paid. That's how you know, yeah, when a man's doing well, 
He don't even know that he, he didn't even checked his bank account <laughs> at Christmas. Puts on his Clark Kent Superman sunglasses. I said, right, it's a deep dish, boy. Not do you care if you get paid or not, because you do this out of love and, you, and you're just all right anyway. It doesn't even matter if you get paid. No, no, man ain't even checked if he's been paid. It's a deep dish, boy. It's God. good to be Terry. You keep seeing me talk about the batch plants. I spoke about it last week. We think internally something that goes hand in hand with the batch plants is for us to open our cube testing lab and immediately begin to do all our own cube testing in-house. Now, for those of you who don't know, you take a sample of concrete in a small mold, which is 100 by 100. You do a couple of them from each pour and you test them at seven days, 28 days and 56 days. Now the way you test these concrete cubes is we have a machine and we crush the cube mechanically to test its compressive strength. And that's how we know if the concrete in fact is the strength that we say it is. Now this is great for a couple of reasons. One, because you can prove to the engineers and main contractor or homeowner, whoever it is that the concrete meets strength, but also internally you can use it to work out if what you're doing to the concrete is helping it or making it less strong. So for instance, we can use different materials in different mixes and change the water content and see if it makes the concrete stronger or weaker. We can also add additives, like there's a water reducing agent you can add to limit the water, which should limit the amount of cement you use. But unless you're doing trials with the cube testing, you're never gonna know if it works. Sam, our concrete salesman, sees this as a completely separate business and says we should be doing it, we should get accreditation, and we should be doing it for other concrete companies also. So we can send someone to site to take the cubes in the first place. You pour the concrete into the mold, you tap it, and this helps it settle and removes any air bubbles. Now you leave it to dry on the site for 24 hours, then you collect it the next day. As soon as you collect it, you need to get it into an incubation chamber. This keeps the concrete cubes at 20 degrees in water. You take a couple of different samples because you need to test it at the separate dates. And once you crush them, you report back to the client or the structural engineer and you let them know. So it could be a side business. And we are definitely going to set our own one up and we are going to do it in a container. So it's going to be another container. Click here to watch a video where we created this office container, my office but we are gonna create an entire cube testing office and probably have two people in a team as a separate business. You see all this, all this kind of free time at Christmas and the shoulder, it just makes you come up with new ideas to give yourself even more headache. You really got you stretched out, yeah? Okay. All the way up here, full range as well. Now that is what you definitely need to do. So stiffness is the enemy. You need to be stretching as much as possible. When? Now. Fantastic. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> good, good stretch, huh? Good. Okay. Now that is already good, but because you can't push it any further with your right hand, you can use a stick or something in your right hand okay. to push it a bit further away, yeah? At a refurbishment project today and this week, we're planning on finishing off what's going on in the loft. I've told you in the past about the build-up in order to make this area completely soundproof. Once we put one 15 mil soundboard on the wall, we have a three mil membrane, which is self-adhesive. It sticks to the wall. And then another 15 mil sound block plasterboard goes onto the front of this. Progress in the loft is going really well and we should be finished the majority of it very soon. What Chris is doing in the bathrooms is cutting out some of the block work so we can sink the pipes into the wall so everything will be flush. In the rest of the property, we are still running the cables for the first fix. You'll notice in the majority of the property, we have run copper pipe, not the plastic poly pipe. Many of you will say it would have been cheaper for us to run the plastic pipe. It would have been a lot quicker, but we are old school and it's at our expense. Plastic pipe, while quicker and getting better, I feel it's more susceptible to leaks on some of the joints. So we're going old school with the copper pipe. Terry, I've got a question. What is your new year's resolution? 
Not your personal one, your work one. I haven't got one. Not people skills. No, no, listen, my people skills are alright, I think. Yeah? Most of the drivers are friendly enough for me. And... Where are you going with this, Daniel? I'm just asking a question, Tell. Like, this doesn't have to be any sinister, any sinister reason. I'm just asking. Oh, Terry. I have a new DJI, which I need to figure out how it's working. And I may give Terry my old one for his vlogging escapades when he goes out on jobs, when he's got something interesting to say. And Terry's talking nonsense again on the off occasion that that does happen. I think a lot of why I say is interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to give you that tell. Do you know his tell? I was trying to type and my shoulder was hurting. So the best thing I could think to do was come and harass you. I feel like I'm putting pressure on Terry as opposed to my shoulder and, and the reattachment of my bicep, which the surgeon is very pleased that I can do this. See that, Tell? Why are you not wearing the sling no more? Not because he said I need to stay out of the sling and I need movement. I've taken my exercise. I should do this at regular intervals, so I'll be back in a bit. So I'm on the loading shovel this morning. Flo's taking a couple of days off. I'm not quite as quick as the usual lads. I take my time, try and get it done safely, efficiently. Understand the weigh loader on it. The weigh loader is very important when you're loading the lorry. So you haven't got lorries shunting on and off weigh bridges. Add bits of load, take bits of load off. We've got a couple of lorries out in between Christmas and New Year this year. We're, very, we're quite busy. We've got a bridge demolition works on the railway infrastructure for quite a value client of ours. One particular job needs six or seven loads of type one. Another job needs a few loads in, a few loads of soil out. A little bit of concrete here and there, but not a great deal. A lot of the concrete was done before Christmas. I'm using my time when I'm not in the load and shovel in between Christmas and New Year to just go through all my paperwork for the lorries, the transport manager for the business as well. I have to be on top of all the the PMIs, so preventative maintenance inspections that have to get done on a lorry every six weeks. You have to be on top of them daily anyway, but it's just nice to get a little bit of quiet time in between Christmas and New Year, go through all the folders, take the folder out individually, make sure I've signed everything off properly, make sure there's no outstanding niggly little bits of work that need to be doing. All of our major stuff is done with Scania and Volvo, the r &M. Everything is in a pretty good place, but it's just nice to go through it take a little bit of quiet time just to reaffirm to myself where I am. 2023 has been an interesting year. Lots of challenges, lots of new things that we've been doing, getting our teeth stuck into. There's always lots of work going on around the yard, new bays, new materials coming in, materials stopping that we're not no longer bringing in. Personally, Daniel gave me the director title, which was quite a proud achievement. Nice to grow into that role as the year's gone by. Obviously, no one has all of the answers. I do my best every day. Hopefully, it's been good enough. I haven't been given my P45 or my notice just yet, so it's generally a quieter time of the year, but it just gives you the time to just tidy everything up and make sure that you go into the new year with everything in place and everything right. And that's what we're hoping to do, that's what we're using this time to do. Well, there's the phone ringing, so I've got to go and get that now. It's Friday, I'm not in the yard, and we missed the spraying of the back of the volumetric but fortunately, we've got there in time and we're going to get the spraying of the cab in Asheville Black. This is to get it ready for the artwork which should take place next week. We've hired a selector grab for the 926 machine to do some work in the backyard. We got it before Christmas. The company we hired it off spent quite a lot of time here fitting the selector grab and trying different settings. We couldn't get it working. I've spoken to a guy that I know who's told me to try a couple of things. Whether it's me or the machine, it must be me, but we're now getting less movement than we were before Christmas. We need the grab and we need the machine to do some work, so we need to keep trying. I'm just gonna keep torturing myself for a little longer. 
I'm working from home this morning because uh, I needed some peace and quiet. I'm working on new materials which are going to be on aggregatesupplier.com and on the Asheville Aggregates website. You saw me go to Scotland a few weeks back and I went to a granite quarry with the fire red material. We're going to be importing it into the yard and we're going to be selling it alongside our new decorative range, which is the grey, plum and blue slate, what I told you about in the past. We want to give a full decorative aggregate offering and push into that market. So the fire red granite is the next step in doing that. I want to get all the information onto the website long before we get the material here. Now, the way in which I do this is firstly, I have an Excel spreadsheet. I drop in the cost of the material, the cost of any haulage. I put in two quid to offload it, uh, something for the LH60 to offload it. If we're making bags, you put in the price of the bags. You put in another couple of quid for the labor in the yard. And then you have your baseline figure and you decide how much you want to make on it. First thing we do is work out the money on each of them. What is going to be the collect rate on the ground loose? We only sell loose material from seven tons upwards. So once I've worked out the figure for seven tons, it goes into the spreadsheet and it calculates the discounts based on quantity. Then based on where you're going to deliver it, you can work out your delivery or you can let people come and collect it. Now I have the list of the materials. I'm going to put them all on the website, but I'm not sure that we're going to bring all of them in at the start. We're going to have a 20 mil red. This is going to be used for driveways and car parks. A 14 mil, which looks very similar, driveways, car parks and used in Asheville. We're going to bring in a 10 mil, which people use in Asheville and a 6 mil. We're going to have a 1 to 3 mil. People use this on resin drives. We're going to have a 0 to 4 mil called Cresta. This means that it's unwashed. And this is the stuff that people use on the red tennis courts. A zero to eight mil, which is a fire chip. People use this on golf courses. You know, those lovely windy red paths. Also a two to five. That is the full offering of the material we're going to bring in. I need a picture of each one, a description. I need to let people know what the material is used for. And then... I'm going to go into my spreadsheet, what I've created for aggregatesupplier.com, where I put the rate of one bag at the top, and then the calculation is already in place to deduct based on quantity. So if you buy two, three, four, five, obviously economies of scale, the more you buy, the cheaper it gets. This is an e-commerce website where people don't call the office, they don't talk to us, they can just order material online. Then when they put their postcode in, then it calculates a delivery charge for them. On Asheville Aggregates website, it's slightly different. This this is just for informational purposes. So if people want to read up on it or they want to have a think about it, there's no prices on Asheville aggregates. I'm just preparing all of that information. I'm going to send it over to meds and then he's going to upload all of it to the website every day. Every day it's a getting stronger, going faster than a roller coaster. The shoulder, my dressing's coming off a bit, but, ah, but. Slowly, but surely, I'm getting more movement. I just have to take my time and not trying to open the jars of any pickles because that twisting is very bad on the shoulder. That's it for Friday. It's Saturday. I'm in the yard. 2023 is almost at an end. I'm looking up at the flag flying in the wind and thinking to myself, have myself and the Asheville team flown the flag this year? And I believe the answer is yes. The yard isn't busy at all today, but there's always plenty of work to do. Working on paperwork and procedures to make sure that everything is in place to mitigate problems happening. At the moment, I'm working on a process with our accidents and insurance. Now, whenever there's an accident, we have to fill in a form, download the cameras, and we send it to the insurance company right away. But I want to change that and I want other members of the team like young Liam, I want them to help also, I want them to get involved, I want to provide training and I want to give a bullet point document what tells people exactly what needs to be done and in what order. Not only giving this to the insurance companies, I want to keep all of this, no matter how small the incident is, I want to keep it on file so we can register it all 
catalogue it all and also have it in an Excel spreadsheet. Now, I want it in an Excel spreadsheet for, for kind of renewal purposes with insurance because every time we go to have an insurance renewal the insurance companies pretend like they can't give us our claims experience to stop us trying to get prices from elsewhere so if we have it ourselves, we might not have the information on how much the outstanding amount on that particular incident may be but at least we will have some of the information we can share so we'll be in a better position there's been a lot of operational and physical activity throughout the entire year. But the work we're doing now, if we do it now, it means that at the start of 2024, we won't need to do it. And that is it for 2023 and for Asheville Weekly, episode 169. Click here for the Asheville website. Click here to subscribe to our channel. Click here to see an Asheville video you may not have seen before. And click here for last week's episode, which was number 168. Oh, Terry's coming down the stairs. Terry's always here. <laughs>